Hello there, and welcome to my channel. I am Wendy the Concierge, and it is lovely to see you today. Well, I guess it's lovely for you to see me. I don't know. We'll find out, right? I'm still learning how to figure out how to do this. Anyway, um, I'm here to talk to you today about strip searches. This was a question from the audience about how these things work, and um, because strip searches are part of incarceral life, and they come in many different shapes and forms. And somebody asked me, hey, could you do a video talking about strip searches? So yes, absolutely, I can do a video about strip searches. That's an excellent question. Okay, so here's the thing. When we're talking about strip searches, there are a lot of different kinds that we could be talking about. Um, there's the initial strip search when you first get arrested there's strip searches for different visits and there's strip searches when there's a problem going on. So I'm gonna go through each of those. And we're gonna start with strip searches for when you're initially arrested. This is when you might be arrested in more of an unscheduled procedure because there is such a thing as being arrested where they simply sit, call up and they say, you know, if they've been questioning for you for a while, they'll call up literally and say, hey, we need you to come in because we're going to be taking you in today. That's a different kind of strip search, but they're very similar. Okay. So you get arrested. Maybe you got caught shoplifting or maybe you got caught um, driving drunk or... Uh, Maybe the cops raided your house and found a whole shitload of drugs and you're in a lot of trouble. That would be me. Okay, so you get brought into the county jail, usually. That's where they bring you. Um, and when you go in, they, they give you clothes. Like, first you get in there and they do all your booking stuff. They're going to ask you a bunch of questions, you know, like your name, your address. Uh, are you a member of any gangs? Um, do you have any medications that you need to take regularly? Uh, any illnesses? Uh, history of suicidal thoughts? I strongly suggest that you do not say that you have suicidal tendencies because guess where that ends you up? That ends you in a turtle suit in the medical unit and their job, their purpose is not to take care of you for feeling suicidal and be like, oh, Wendy, what's wrong? Let's talk. Would you like to talk about your feelings? No, fuck no. That's not what they're, no. What they want to do is just make sure that you don't actually kill yourself so that they can be sure that they can prosecute you properly and put you away for a nice chunk of time. Okay. So they take you in there and they'll have you, they'll take you to a private room to do this, all right? They're not going to have you do it like out in the middle of the freaking like lobby of the jail or whatever. That's, no. They're, they're, there's policies and procedures for this shit, okay? So, it'll be a female officer if you're a woman. It'll be a male officer if you're a man. Um, and this is another time to remind you for uh, our gender non-conforming people in the audience. If you are a trans person, they go by what your genitalia is. And I, I, I want to apologize to you for this because I know it's traumatizing and I'm really sorry and I can't imagine the shit that you guys go through and how miserable it is for you. But yeah, you're going to have to have like male guards check you out when you're a trans woman just because you might still be pre-op. And that's something that I know is so humiliating for a lot of trans women and I just want to acknowledge that, that that fucking sucks and I'm really sorry for you um anyway uh they take you in and you'll take off your clothes they will like tell you that you need to like lift up your breasts so that they can see you know that you've not got like a shank or like I don't know pills or some shit under your breast creases so they'll make you lift it up to make sure you're not hiding anything under there. Like if you've got some belly rolls, like many of us do, especially after a couple of kids, they will make you lift up your belly rolls as well to make sure you're not hiding anything there. They will make you squat down. Sometimes they will make you reach back and pull apart your cheeks 
to make sure you're not hiding anything. And a lot of times they'll make you cough too. That's usually the worst of what a strip search is. But then there's California. And those of you who have had this pleasure in California know what I'm about to tell you. In California, they'll have you do all that while you're standing on a mirror. So the mirror, like obviously, they just look at the mirror and it's looking right up into your bits. And they'll take a freaking flashlight and look. They don't play. So this is a thing and you should be aware of it. And the reason that I'm telling you about this is twofold. There's one so that, you know, the general public knows like, yeah, that shit really happens. And the other is so that if you get arrested and you're being taken in there and this is happening to you, a lot of people sometimes will think like, they're being specifically targeted and that this is special treatment for them specifically that like, but the truth is everybody goes through this. You're not special. Um, this is standard policy and procedure. It's humiliating and degrading, but there's nothing really that you can do about it. I'm sorry. Um, that's an initial arrest strip search. Okay. When you're being held, like, in a county facility, um, and sometimes in the federal holding facilities, too, because there are a few uh, federal facilities that you're in where you can be held for your pretrial stuff if you're being held on pretrial, like me. Uh, many people who are arrested on drug crimes are, and uh, even some who are on white-collar crimes. I, I know somebody being held right now on a freaking perjury charge. If they want to hold you, they will. So when you go and meet with your lawyer in person, some facilities have that where you can go and they'll have like a private room and you can go and have a conference with your lawyer there, right? Uh, sometimes they'll also allow you to meet a religious uh, advisor there, like a, a priest, a rabbi, something like that. Um, if you're also sometimes social workers, like if you're having issues with your children, like maybe you need to arrange for a uh, foster care or maybe you need to sign away your rights or uh, arrange to have someone else adopt them. Anyway, these are called uh, contact visits. Um, when you have those contact visits like that, there's not any other correctional officer in the room. So since you're with a civilian, Afterwards, they often, in fact, I've never heard of a place where they don't, they often will strip search you uh, to see, to make sure you know that your lawyer didn't hand you a couple keys of coke while you're in there or whatever, right? Right. So, um, at that point, they'll do the same procedure. They usually, from what I've been told, they don't do the mirror thing for that. But again, it's, you'll have to take off all your clothes, including your socks. Yeah, even though it's winter and it's cold, okay? And they will check you out. Um, also, like for uh, women, especially men too, but usually it affects women more. Those of us who have long hair and it's all tied up, there are many officers who will make you take it down and shake it out so that they can see that you're not, you know, hiding like, you know, a special pen or something like that in there, okay? So that will be a thing. And again, it's not you. This is... It's what they do. Sorry. Um, so that will happen after you meet your lawyer and stuff. And I know that you're sitting there thinking, like, really? After I meet my lawyer? Are they seriously insinuating that my lawyer's bringing me some crack? Like, really? Yeah, they are. And the reason that they're insinuating that is because it has happened. I'm sorry, but it's real. Okay? Um, and this is something I want to warn you about, too. They can be really petty as in these strip searches right so let's say that your lawyer is really nice not that I ever had a nice lawyer whatsoever who perhaps did something like this and gives you a hard candy a Jolly Rancher to chew on while you're hanging out talking about your case and maybe you're watching highlights from Hockey Night in Canada on his laptop with him because he's from Calgary and he feels your pain being a homesick Canadian that might happen to you so you're sitting there watching this, sucking on some hard candies and not thinking, 
You put the wrapper in your pocket. So you go in, you do your strip search, they check your pocket, and they pull that candy wrapper out. Guess what? I just got my lawyer in trouble. Uh oh. Cause what he even though it's petty as fuck, it's a fucking Jolly Rancher, what he technically just did was pass me contraband. Okay. Now, luckily, what they usually do is they say something like, Wendy, do you like your lawyer? Yes, I love my lawyer very much. He's a very nice man. He understands me. Okay, great. Do you, do you like having, like, contact visits with him where you get to hang out, feel like you're talking to a real human being once in a while? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, great. So, don't put wrappers in your pocket because you just got him in trouble, okay? Oh, right, my bad. Okay, so don't do that. Watch out for that. That's something that they absolutely will do. Okay. So let's talk about another time that they will do a strip search. Visiting. Now, some of you are in facilities where, uh, well, those of you watching probably aren't in a facility, but maybe you've been in one. And for those of you who are watching from a facility, hi! Much love to all of you. I know. It sucks. I hope you're home soon. So anyway. When you, many of you in certain facilities, when you're visiting certain facilities, whatever, you might be separated by class. A lot of people, like, think that it's like in the movies, you know, where you see the plexiglass and you each pick up a phone. That's really not very common, especially not in federal facilities, especially the lower security facilities and the minimums, like the camps. That's not a thing, okay? It's common in county jail like holding facilities where people are before they're sentenced um, but even those a lot of them now you'll go and it's um it's a video visit thing some of them like you have to go to the actual physical jail and you'll be seated like at a booth like skype booth you'll pick up the phone and you're connected like by skype like that where you talk to your loved one like over a video screen okay so that obviously isn't going to involve strip search or anything. They do this to prevent contraband coming in. And I'm not saying it never happens by visitors, but studies, and I'm talking the studies done by the government themselves, have proven repeatedly that the overwhelming majority of contraband, and when I say overwhelming majority, I'm talking like, you know, upwards of 85, 90% is coming in from the guards, Okay. We all know this, but for some reason they like to just put more and more and more restrictions on the visits because, you know, restricting the guards and scrutinizing their guards, it would throw up all kinds of drama with the unions and it would mean that they would have to actually do something about a problem with their own staff members. And it's just much easier to restrict the inmates. I don't say that in a hateful way. I'm saying that just in a sheer logistics way. This way they can look like they're doing something and not have to actually do too much. Right? Right. Okay. So, after, but in federal prisons, especially at the minimums, they're contact visits. Like, you're sitting right across from each other, like small table, uh, on like plastic lawn chairs. You know those lawn chairs that everybody's got on their patios, right? Um, those kind of chairs, but, you know, there's maybe like two feet between you. You can give each other a hug. You can give each other a kiss. You can't sit there and make out the whole time. I mean, I've seen people do that. But, like, you know, that's when, like, you have a chill guard on duty or people are just, like, looking the other way or maybe they just don't feel like dealing with it. But for the most part, you know, you can have, like, some hug and kiss at the beginning and then you sit down and, like, you talk. Sometimes you can hold hands and they don't give a shit, but sometimes they'll be, like, all, like, hey, no hand-holding. And it's, like, Really? But, yeah, really sucks, but it is. So, one of the things that people do a lot when visitors come is there is occasionally contraband passed. This isn't usually when, you know, big contraband, like a whole lot of drugs or, like, things like that are passed. This is usually, like, petty shit, you know, like uh, charcoal toothpaste, because they don't sell that on commissary. Um... Needles and threads, you know, because, like, we need to hem up our clothes and they don't hem them up for us anymore in some of the prisons. Um, let's see. What are some other things that I've seen them pass? Uh, you know, just really trivial stuff like that. 
Well, if somebody once got a decent toothbrush that way or um, Crest White Strips. Yeah. Starburst. Shit like that. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, that, that was, oddly enough, that was the majority of the stuff that was brought in. I remember one time somebody actually brought in um, an inhaler, like their asthma inhaler. Yeah, you would think the BOP would give you that, but they were just being a pain about it, and there was all this bureaucracy, so their husband just, like, brought them one. And because we're actually allowed to have inhalers, when the girl went out, they were just like, oh, it's your inhaler, cool. You know, because... Obviously, she must have brought it in with her because she's asthmatic. It's written in her thing. Yeah, these things happen. So, what they'll do sometimes is that if you're somebody that they know that you're the one who's always got, like, lighters around or they think you're the one that's selling cigarettes or, uh, you know, stuff like that, um, earrings, you know, everybody wants earrings. And some of the facilities sell them. And some of them don't. So if you're in a facility that doesn't sell them and you want earrings, the only way that you're going to get them is if you buy them off somebody, which is kind of gross because we're not allowed access to rubbing alcohol, or you're going to have to have somebody bring them in on a visit. Right? Right. Okay. So if you're somebody that they know is constantly selling contraband to people and stuff, and the guards do figure it out pretty quickly. Like, you're the one that's always got a fantastic supply of food and t-shirts and all that. And yet, it seems that you don't spend shit on commissary. Meanwhile, you've got, like, six bottles of body wash and 20 books of stamps. Hmm. I wonder how you got those. So they notice this shit. And so, you know, your people come. They visit you. And then afterwards, you know, they're like, Wendy, come here. Uh-huh. Yeah. First thing they do is you stand there like this and they use the wand on you, you know? And like if it goes beep, beep, beep here, that's a problem. Because it's not the underwire on my bra because we're not allowed underwire bras in prison, right? No. They just found a lighter in my bra. Ah! This is scary. It's not that big of a deal. It's like a 300 shot. Who cares? And they wonder why people keep smoking. So, yeah. And then what they'll do is they'll have you go into the uh, washroom, bathroom. I, I say washroom all the time. Canadian. Represent. They'll take you into the bathroom with a female officer if you're a woman, a male officer if you're a man. You'll have to do the strip that I talked about just a minute ago. Whole thing. You know, cough, squat, pull your cheeks, all that. Shake out your clothing. Take off your socks. Take your boot like this. Okay? Then you get redressed and you go back inside and hopefully they didn't find anything on you. That's the best feeling ever when like they're like, hey, you, I'm going to strip search you and they strip search you and they don't find shit. And you're like, yeah, because I'm not the one you need to worry about. Bye. Sometimes also, let's say that they know that um, Felicity here is mad 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 like contraband queen she's the one who's selling like whole cartons of cigarettes uh zippo lighters cell phones the works you can get everything in her one-stop shop all right great so felicity's man comes see her they make out they kiss they think she's bringing in some meth and coke too all right you know so they're they're, they're gonna hit felicity but they can't look like they're targeting felicity because they, they can actually get in trouble for that so instead of just grabbing felicity they're going to grab Wendy, Janie, Brittany, and Christy, too. So they take us all in there. And they'll separate us and have us each go in there one at a time and search. They'll have one officer take us in the bathroom and strip search us. And the rest of us will be required to sit there with another officer watching us to make sure that we're not, like, casually, like, oh, shit, take that lighter out, toss it. And if you do have something on you and you can toss it, So, that's how that happens and how you can get caught up in something even though you're not the one being targeted. And even though you might be bringing in something really petty like needle and thread. And in case you're thinking, well, you shouldn't be having needle and thread there. You could use it as a weapon. Okay, they used to sell needle and thread on commissary. We're actually allowed to have the needles and thread. And you can get them through special order still, too. But... 
it takes months to get them to come in and people aren't patient and you want the right colors and stuff like that and so you're like fuck this this is annoying just bring me some shit you know it that's how these things happen so just be careful how you do it. oh yeah makeup that's a big uh, thing that people like to be bringing for contraband too. I always forget that because in case you didn't notice, I I don't wear makeup. It's not because I have some uh, like moral value judgment against it. It's just I'm not very skilled with it and I can't be bothered to remember to do a routine every day because ADD is real. And um, so pretty much all I've ever done with myself in my life is like a little bit of eyebrow penciling and lipstick, lip gloss, that sort of thing. But that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's another way that you can be strip searched. Now there's another way that you can be strip searched, which is, um, let's say that like you get caught outside smoking. Okay. And you may not even be the one smoking. Let's just say that, like, somebody's out there having a cigarette and you're out there talking to them because you like to talk to them and, you know, it's a social thing, whatever. You go out there and smoke. And usually, if it's your regular guard that just, like, comes around the corner and it's like, guys, are you fucking serious? Put out your cigarettes, you know, and you're like, all right, sorry. You know, and you put out your cigarettes and... You know, you, you go back in, you know, feeling all, like, humble and contrite. Sorry. You know, okay. That's usually not going to get you a strip search. Let's say that it's SIS or a whole lieutenant is up there and you get caught by them coming around the corner. Yeah, you're probably going to get strip searched at that point, even if you're not the one with the cigarette in your hand. What are they looking for? They're looking for cigarette stuff. Because here's the thing. If you don't have the cigarette in your actual hand, let's just say that, like, like you see them coming around the corner and before they see you, you toss the thing and you blow out a whole fucking cloud of smoke, they can't give you the shot because you don't have the cigarette in your hand. Now, that's why a lot of guards will just be like, get the fuck out of here get back inside and you're like okay but if it's SIS or a lieutenant they take that shit really personal so they'll probably grab you and be like no come on everybody's getting strip searched because you know they want to check to see if you know you've got uh, a cigarette held in your cleavage or a lighter in your bra strap or something like that so everybody gets strip searched and it, again it's the same kind of one where they'll take you in one by one and strip search you um, okay, so there's that. Now, here's another example of a different kind of strip search. I can't reiterate enough, and this isn't just about being stripped. This is about getting in trouble in prison in general. I can't state enough how much of a difference there is between being caught doing something stupid, no matter how petty it is, um, by your regular guard versus SIS. Okay, so story time with Wendy the concierge is about to happen now. All right, so let's say that you are driving around because uh, it's your work detail, you know. Your job is to drive people from staff housing to the construction shop and from the uh, the lawns and gardens area where they're doing some landscaping along the edge of the property to camp from the plumbing site where they're doing some work at the warden's house back to uh, the shops that sort of thing you, you're basically the shop driver okay all right so you do that and because you don't want to get caught with your contraband cell phone when they're doing all these shakedowns and stuff, you have your cell phone with you at work because nobody ever searches at work. Why not? Sounds like a great idea. Right? Yeah. Maybe not so much. So you go in and you get the keys from the front lobby for your day of driving around. And they say, hey, come here. And you're like, what? Can you go through the scanner there? And you just kind of look at the scanner. 
and you know it's a body scanner like at the airport okay and normally you only go through it when you're going into the actual FCI you know that when you go through this scanner you're gonna set it off now you can claim it's your steel-toed boots that's setting it off you can claim it's your glasses right yeah so you go through it and they say oh we have to wand you so they come with the wand just like at the airport and it beeps at your bra and you and I both know it's beeping because your little baby cell phone is there right right so at this time they come get a female officer to come and take you in the washroom and strip search you and in that strip search oh baby so they do the whole thing they make you take off all your clothes shake them out make you do the pop and squat and all of that then they take your boots and they take them apart i'm talking they take the soles of your boots out they shake them they take the wand along them they run your boots through the goddamn scanner machine just like at the airport you know where you put all your shit into the like the little gray bins and it goes through the the little square machine and you see on the x-ray what's in there they put your boots through there to see if like you've got some hidden compartment in there or some shit of course they find your phone because it's just sitting there in your bra right right okay they do all that okay and then after that you know you get dressed they take you to the shoe you're in there they bring all of your stuff and all that okay great so that's another way that you're gonna get strip searched all right so let's say that you are one of the people who is maybe absconding from the campus shall we say going on a shopping trip to go to the quick shop to pick up some cigarettes right you know that you have a certain amount of time between like let's say the uh, 9 p.m. count when that's finished and midnight when basically nobody's around doing anything and you know the officer's just gonna be sitting in their office like playing on YouTube shopping on Amazon whatever right whatever officers do so you decide you're gonna hike off to the quick shop real quick and get some smokes for everybody good for you take one for the team that's right and let's say that you do this and you know the patterns of where outside patrol is except for this night somebody else and you don't know this somebody's called in it's not the regular person and so the 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 rhythm is just a, a little bit off and as you're coming up the hill you are blinded by halogen lights spotting you you're only 20 feet from the door and you're like oh shit why am i not there and you want to run but you know there's no point because you're in the light and you're busted so they stop you and you know you know the jig is up so you go with them you keep your mouth shut because you're like that oh who are you buying cigarettes for me me i smoke a lot Wendy, you don't smoke. No, 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 I smoke. I smoke all the time. No, you don't. Yeah, I love to smoke. Yeah, they're all for me. That's the appropriate response, by the way, if you ever find yourself in this situation. So then they take you down. And again, they will walk you through the body scanner. You will have to go into the bathroom. You will get stripped stem to stern. And have to shake out all of your clothes like that. You will have to take apart your hair and stuff. Oh, yeah. And they have no mercy for it if you have braids either. Okay. So if you've got your hair all in braids, you're going to have to take apart all your braids. Take it all out. Take it all down. This is a thing, too, uh, when you're flying on Con Air and when you're being transported by the marshals. If you've got your hair done up in a bunch of braids, nope, nope, nope. And by the way, nope. You're going to have to take it all out. Some of them don't even allow you to have a hair elastic, just depending on the day. So you're going to have to just have all your hair out, bushy, flowing, nothing. It's just the way it is. All right. So they do all that. And so the strip search can be kind of a regular thing, especially if you're somebody who does not self-surrender. If you self-surrender, especially if you self-surrender to a camp, you're probably only going to get strip searched when you come in and occasionally after a visit. 
Um, when you, I do know also when you go to state prison, there are some state prisons uh, where when you get in, you'll be strip searched like that. You'll be taken in and you will be given a bar of lice soap and told to go shower with it. And they will watch you shower to make sure you are washing yourself. And just so we're clear, when they give you that bar of soap, that lice soap, and tell you to, like, you know, shower yourself, they mean for you to wash between your legs. And, like, if you don't, they'll be like, you need to wash your pubes. Even though you're sitting here thinking, I don't have lice. What the fuck? Yeah, they don't care because... They don't know what kind of lifestyle you're coming from. You're coming from a jail. You could have gotten lice in the jail, something like that. And I'm not saying anything against you when I say that. I'm not saying that people in jail are dirty. For God's sake, I spent like over three years incarcerated. I'm People in jail, a lot of them are some of the cleanest you'll ever meet because our cleanliness and our lives are the only, one of the only things that we have control over. So people will be fastidious. But there's this thing where people will be like, God, all these bitches are so dirty here. I don't know how these bitches live here. They are so dirty. I'm not dirty like that. A lot of people like to talk like that. And it's not that they are particularly cleaner than everybody else. It's that they are fastidious about their personal cleanliness. Because like I said, it's one thing that they have the control over. And also, it's a way of sort of separating yourself from the others. And there are some people who are nasty and dirty. Like, there would be people who would, like, go and poop in the toilet and then, like, not flush it. And, okay, that, that shit happens in county because people sometimes have the attitude of, oh, well, if I'm going to be locked up, y'all are going to be fucking miserable right along with me. And so they do nasty stuff like that, okay? Usually by the time you get to prison, people will discipline that out of you because it's like, hey, w we all live here right now. We've all got to keep this clean. Nobody wants to be here. The least we can do is, like, be respectful to one another, right? Right. So usually that shit isn't happening once you get to prison, especially, like, in a minimum, like in a camp. That kind of nonsense isn't supposed to go on. You do that kind of stuff, like, in a low or a mania, those girls will jack you up. They, uh, they're not having that. They're not living like that. That is not a thing. There was some girls who would, in the facilities where I was, um, sometimes they would just not dispose of their menstrual product properly. You know? Like, they would, like, take a bloody pad and like they would like leave a bloody pad on the floor or they would have a bloody pad and they would put it in the fucking toilet and it would be all clogged up and mess and stuff and okay like let's say you have a digestion problem and a really bad period or whatever and you put all kinds of toilet paper in there and it's not flushing right I don't know maybe you're drunk too I was the head orderly at the time I'm the kind of person and everybody fucking knew this too where you could come to me and be like Wendy I just made a total shit show in the bathroom, literally. And I am so sorry. I'm drunk, sick, had a miscarriage, whatever. Okay, I would have been there. I would have been like, oh, nasty. But thank you for telling me. You know, because now I can do something about it. You know, do, I, people knew. Don't leave me in a position where you know I have to go in there and find it. And yet, invariably, it would happen. And so, like, I'm a very laid back person. But when stuff like that would happen, I would go screaming my head off, stomping through the dorms, saying, I'm not going to fucking leave like this. and Don't you dare do that to my orderlies. Because, like, I was a head orderly, so I wasn't necessarily always the one cleaning it up. But, like, I had people who worked, you know, and my job was to organize them, you know, not to supervise them. You don't get to manage other inmates because that causes problems. But I would organize and I would be like, okay, what job do you want to do? Okay, cool. Okay, give me your hours and I'll make sure you get paid. You know, that kind of crap, right? All right. So, like, I, I mean, cleaning a bathroom in a, any industrial facility is nasty. 
in a prison, especially, you know, it's not your bathroom, it's somebody else's, like, germs and shit, so I would be livid, just fucking enraged, and, you know, like, one of the guards would come down and be like, what, what, what is she yelling about? Because I'm not the one who's usually yelling, right? And, and people would explain them what was going on, they'd be like, oh, okay, carry on, and they would leave, right? So, yeah, that's a nasty thing. Um, there was another another reason that sometimes they will strip search you is let's say they uh, let's say the rumor gets around that you and that Susie and Jenny get into a fight. Okay, there's not supposed to be no fighting in when you're incarcerated, right? It it, it happens. It's just like in hockey. There's not supposed to be fights in hockey. <laughs> yeah, we all know how all that works, right? Right. So um, there's not supposed to be fights and. It's especially in a camp, if you get caught physically fighting, theoretically, you're supposed to lose your camp status. That doesn't happen either. Um, so, if you get caught fighting, or more specifically, if you don't get caught fighting, but rumor gets around because people talk, and guards are nosy and they listen. So, even if somebody doesn't go and say, hey, officer friendly, guess what, da 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 you know what? They sit there and they walk around and they'll like lurk and creep around a corner and they'll hear two people going, oh, did you see the way Susie fucked Jenny up? Man, she had a black eye. I fucking like took care of her and put some stitches in there, but I don't know if they're going to hold or whatever. Okay, that's how they find out a lot of information. So like when you're in prison, you're talking, keep your voice very low. And, like, don't even assume that the bathroom is safe because if you've got, like, female officers or whatever, they will hide in those fucking bathrooms and listen. I've watched them do it. Okay. So, they hear that me and Susie got into a fight. Now, me and Susie got into it. I don't know. I didn't like the way she looked at me or something. So, I fucking smacked her and she hit me back and I plowed her and, you know, like, she uh, scratched me, like, right here and like tore a nice chunk of my skin up and so I'm like you know wearing my button up real nice and uh, you know let's say that like she fucking like clocked me right here so I uh, I'm wearing a headband yeah I'm wearing my headband you know or my turban or some shit right yeah so the officers come and they get us and they take me and Susie in one at a time sometimes they'll do this up at medical Okay, just in case that there's something medically that they need to take care of you, right? So they have us do a strip search up there so that they can examine our bodies and see if there's evidence of any sort of fight or whatever. They'll have you stick out your hands and they'll look at your knuckles. Um, you know, sometimes they'll like look at your boots and see if there's blood on them. I'm like, we're campers, we're not like fucking boot stomping each other. Get the fuck out of here people are crazy sometimes for real but that's a thing and that happens too and then finally there's another type of strip search that is kind of nasty but it's real and I just want to talk about it for a minute this doesn't happen I don't want to act like this is a regular thing okay it's something that you see happen and you just kind of know when it happens, but let's say that, like, an officer just doesn't fucking like you for whatever reason. Maybe you're too mouthy. Maybe they know that you're, you know, somebody who's got a lot of contraband, or maybe they know that you smoke. Maybe they see that you don't do fuck all at your job. Maybe they see you flouting the rules a lot. Or maybe they see that you're happy. I actually had a guard once who fucking hated me because I was really happy. Why was I happy? Well, I was no longer an opiate addict and I didn't feel like shit anymore and want to die. And so even if I was locked up, one day I would be free again and I wouldn't be a prisoner and a slave to my addiction anymore. So what on earth did I have to be sad about? What was I going to do? Sit around in prison and cry like a bitch all day? What was that going to do for me? Make me feel miserable? Make my family feel miserable? Fuck that noise. So I would look up and I'd be like, wow, the sky is beautiful today. 
I would find something to be happy about every day because I wanted to be happy. So I found things to be happy about, right? Right. This guard did not like that. She was very much old school. Like, she was probably about 10 years older than me. Yeah, she said she, once she graduated in 84. So she was about 10 years older than me. And she was very much of that type that felt that, like, when you were in jail, you should be, like, very contrite. That this was very serious. Uh, that you should be basically looking down and feeling like, whoa. You know, like some very special episode of ABC After School Special or some shit. And I wasn't having that. I was joyful. Um, so, sometimes when a guard doesn't like you, they just don't like the look of you or whatever. It's fucking Tuesday. They'll grab me and they'll be like, strip search. And you may be sitting there thinking that they're doing it for sexual purposes like maybe they're getting off on it or something but it, that's I'm not saying that that can't happen but that's not the kind of thing that I'm actually talking about here this is what I'm talking about like they're just mad at you so they do it and they do it to put you in your place I'm not sure that it's even a conscious thought like oh I'm gonna show her watch this you know I don't think that it's like that. I think it's just that they're mad, and so they want to strip search you just to make sure because they're hoping, you know, that they can catch you with something. But what it really is, it's a display of power. I've been told that that happens a little more often in the men's facilities than not. You know, because women, like, just because of power dynamics and socialization, when you're telling a woman to strip, it's a little bit dicey. It's a little more dicey than it is with the boys. So, you know, but, so that happens, that kind of a strip search happens a little more in the men's facility than it does in the women. But it absolutely happens in the women's too. By the time you get out of prison, especially if you've been to a variety of facilities, you probably won't even notice about having your clothes off anymore. It's almost like your naked dignity is gone. I still have plenty of dignity, but I have absolutely no naked dignity left. I just don't care anymore. I can take my clothes off in front of anybody. It doesn't even phase me whatsoever. Um, this comes in very handy, actually, when you're on probation and they want you to do a UA all the time. And, you know, the, it, a lot of people have this... Thing where they just can't pee in front of another human being. Now, I'm not saying that everybody who's been to prison pees happily in front of everybody, but in my experience, it does kind of help. It, it can kind of cure you a little bit of it. Again, though, not everybody. And now these days, like, um, like I have a new probation officer watching me now, and he has a female partner, and so he always brings her when he comes over to do uh, my drug testing. And so she always comes in the bathroom with me, you know, just to make sure I'm not, you know, using, like, urine from another source or, like, doing something funny with the sample to make sure it doesn't pop hot. You know, just make sure it's a clean catch. Okay. So she'll come in the bathroom with me, and it doesn't even phase me. Um, speaking of which, that's another way about the strip searching. When you go and do your UAs, when you're doing, uh, when you're checking in either on your pretrial or with your post-supervisory release afterwards, okay, a lot of times they'll come in the bathroom with you, and um, some of you, I I've never actually seen what I'm about to tell you about, okay, but I know people who have, and I've heard of this, there's this thing, honest to God, there is such a thing as a clear toilet, where they will have you go on that, you know, and you'll be holding the sample cup, you know, and you're sitting here trying to go. And the officer will be, like, looking at the toilet. And a, a friend of mine one time, and this is not a drug charge I'm talking about. This was, like, a, a, a lady in her mid-50s in there. Like, she, she's, like, a total grandmotherly diabetic type, you know, like... It's her very first offense. She's all, like, teaches Sunday school and shit. She doesn't even swear, right? And so, like, 
she's sitting there on this toilet, like mortified to begin with. And the officer asks her, can, can you like spread the lips a little more so I can see? She, she about like just, that was just the end of all of her, that poor woman's dignity. She was just miserable after that point. So again, I tell you these stories not because I want to rail against the system or something like that. Like, yes, this sucks. But I have no hope in anything changing. My goal is to try to help people get through it a little bit easier. There's a fantastic scene in 28 Days Later, this movie. and It's about like these infected people. Technically, they come off as zombies, although on a technical level, they are not actually zombies since these are people suffering from a virus and not the undead. But that's kind of splitting hairs, I think. That's neither here nor there, but I had to say that because otherwise all the zombie fans are going to come at me. Anyway, so in this movie, 28 Days Later, at one point, this young teenage girl, she's like 14 or 15, she's with this older uh, woman. Well, not older, older, this other woman. She's like 28, 30, something like that. They're in this building hiding out, and there are all these adult men there. And they see two women, and they decide that they're going to have a party. And so the the older of the two starts feeding the younger one pills and she's like are you trying to kill me and the older one says no i'm trying to make it so that you won't remember what's about to happen because it's true she knew they weren't going to get out of it so she was trying to make it as easy on the kid as possible spoiler for those of you that are worried like nothing happens they don't end up getting assaulted it's okay <laughs> I don't want anybody like worrying about these characters because I know there's some people out there who do about this kind of things, but that's kind of how I feel. You're going to go to prison. It's going to suck. It's going to be awful. Nothing's going to change that, but you can get through it without losing your mind, without feeling miserable, and have a bright future waiting for you on the other side, no matter what kind of indignity you go through. That is going to end, and it's not going to be the rest of your life. Guess what? Nobody strip searches me anymore. Yeah, sure, somebody comes in the bathroom with me while, you know, I go take a piss for a UA. So what? How many of my friends came in the bathroom with me to do coke when I was out in the bar scenes? Like, come on. It's not that big of a deal. My probation officer is perfectly nice to me. She's uh, she, she's a perfectly nice woman. I met her like once. It's not that deep. I pee in a cup and they go on with their lives. It's really okay. I got through it. You're going to get through it too. So when the strip searches come, you're yeah, the end of the story is you're going to have to show your body to everybody. It's probably going to feel humiliating. If it gives you any comfort, they've seen it a million times. If anybody says any bullshit to you, like makes any comment about your body, you know, like, hmm, you sure look in good shape. Or like, wow, looks like you need to lay off on the Oreos from commissary. Maybe you should skip ice cream day. I bet they love you. Oh, now I see why your bitch is so crazy about you. Yeah, no. Any kind of commentary about your body like that, whether it's positive or negative, even if it's just noticing something neutral like, wow, you're a lot smaller than I thought. Wow, you're a lot bigger than I thought. Uh-uh. No. Write that shit down. Talk to the uh, counselors there, the staff, the social worker. Move it up the chain, okay? Because that is not appropriate. Don't let them do that to you. They can see you, but they don't get to humiliate you verbally like that. It's humiliating enough to take your clothes off. So don't fall for that. But yeah, you do have to get naked. I'm sorry. All right. So there we go. That's today's episode. We have a whole lot more episodes coming down the pike. Both stuff for... Before you go to prison and after, in upcoming episodes, we're going to be talking about the whole process of how you get to prison when they don't let you out on pretrial. And that will include details about flying on the notorious Con Air. Yep, that's real. It's a thing. 
And also we're going to talk about post-prison life. We're going to talk about the fintech industry and how they've been really good about helping um, the re returning citizens and also the, the uh, computer science and IT industry as well and how you too can rebuild and reinvent yourself in a whole new career. If you've got any questions, again, go ahead and hit your girl up. My email is down below at wendytheconcierge at gmail.com. And you can ask me anything, and I'll try to find an answer to the best of my ability. I'm kind of the dear Abby of prison life. So uh, go ahead and hit me up. Again, uh, I never withhold information for, you know, money or anything like that. I'm not about that life. But if you do want to throw a little bit of cash at me and thank me for being awesome, if you like the work that I do and want to help me continue to do more of it, you can hit my Kofi coffee. I, I still don't know how that's pronounced. I think it's coffee because they're always saying like buy a cup of coffee is like an example of how much money you donate. Whatever. Anyway, you can hit that up. Details are down below. Thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely day today. Bye for now.